the audio is breaking up. Now, I'm not sure why the audio is breaking up because when I broadcast on Facebook Live using the same computer, the same mic, I'm broadcasting through Zoom, it comes through fine. When I try it through YouTube, there's a problem. I think it cleared up some, okay? All right, so um, I want to share this. I want you to hear. Let's turn up the audio here. There's a problem. I think it cleared up. Okay. We can't do that. Let's see. How do we how do we do this here? Okay, it shows uh, that. All right. So let's see. I want you to hear the caption. Maybe I can just mute this. I want you to see the caption of what was said. It's a short video. Okay, she says, and they remind me that there's a lot of liberal folks in those other schools who that maybe we don't want to vote. Uh, maybe we want to make it just a little harder. So I think that's a great idea, okay? Uh, she said, they remind me that there's a lot of liberal folks in those other schools who maybe we don't want to vote, all right? And uh, let's see something here. Just one since I have the audio going from the YouTube broadcast, it's hard to hear. But you can watch this yourself. It's a very short video, only about 18 seconds. But this is what she says, okay? This is what she says. Now, what's interesting is that her camp did not dispute this. They tried to explain it away and said that it was selectively edited, all right? So if we go back and look and look here, now she's joking about voter suppression, okay? In a state that has a history of voter suppression and is a former Confederate state, the state of Mississippi for over 100 years had the canton of the Confederate battle flag in their state flag. I can't remember if they have removed it from the state flag now. I know back in, um, 2015, when you had the um, killing at uh, the massacre at um, Mother Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in South Carolina. I know there was a whole debate about it then, and there's been the debate since then. I, I don't remember if they've actually removed it from the Mississippi state flag, okay? But Mississippi has a long history of voter suppression. This is a former Confederate state. They had a, a history of Jim Crow. Keep in mind, it was Mississippi where Emmett Till was killed, August 28, 1955, okay? Jackson, Mississippi is where Mega Evers was assassinated in June of 1963. June 21st, 1964, that's where Goodman, Schwann, and Cheney, the three civil rights workers, were killed by the Ku Klux Klan. Okay, so Mississippi has a long history of this. Mississippi is where the White Citizens Council started in 1954. And they're going to spread all throughout the South. And the White Citizens Council was created in direct backlash to the Brown versus Board of Education uh, desegregation case in 1954. Okay, so uh, if we continue here and look at this article from Washington Post. Um, so a video tweeted Thursday afternoon after uh, afternoon shows Hyde Smith telling a small crowd in Starksville, Mississippi that they, that quote, they remind me that there's a lot of liberal folks in those other schools who maybe we don't want to vote. Maybe we want to make it just a little more difficult. And I think that's a great idea, end quote, okay? So her campaign said on Thursday, November 15th, that the Senator was joking and that the video was quote unquote, selectively edited. Uh, so Melissa Scallon said, uh, um, who's a spokeswoman for her campaign, she said, obviously, Senator Hyde Smith was making a joke, and clearly the video was selectively edited. Okay, now, they, I haven't seen any evidence 
that the video was selectively edited. And they didn't, and Melissa Scallon didn't prove or didn't make any other allegations or say how the video was selectively edited. She went on to say, quote, now the liberal media wants to talk about anything other than Mike Espy's, her, her um, opponent, Mike Espy's record of corruption and taking $750,000 and lying about it from an African dictator now charged with now charged with war crimes, including murder, rape, and torture, end quote. Okay. So this is a, so they deflect from this and go to Mike Espy and him accepting money from an African dictator. We're going to come to that in just a minute because I did some research on that. The Sun Sentinel has an article about that from um, yesterday, I think it was. So Senator Hyde Smith is facing off uh, in a November 27th runoff against Democrat Mike Espy, as I said, and her campaign has been reeling from another remark caught on camera in which she joked about a public hanging. So we talked about that, okay? So Mike Espy served three terms in the uh, House of Representatives, U.S. House of Representatives, representing Mississippi from 1987 to 1993. Senator Hyde Smith was a Democrat up until 2010. Uh, she is the, um, she's a former Democratic state senator and agriculture commissioner. She switched to the Republican party in 2010, according to the Clarion Ledger uh, newspaper there. And uh, she recently vowed to keep pushing Donald Trump's agenda, asserting that, quote, Republicans are going to keep this seat, end quote, and that she would, quote, fight like nobody's business in the next three weeks, end quote. She's endorsed by Donald Trump, by the way, okay? All right, now, uh, in, an email, in an email to the Washington Post, Melissa Scallon, uh, who is a spokesperson for Senator Hyde Smith's campaign, uh, says Senator Highsmith's comments about voting came on November 3rd while a senator was, quote, talking to four freshmen at Mississippi State University about an idea to have polling places on college campuses, end quote. OK, she said in the email, that's what she that's what she said was a great idea. Someone pointed out that college campuses were liberal. And that's when she made the joke about not wanting everyone to vote. That was a joke. The polling places on college campuses is what she said was a great idea. Okay. Melissa Scallon added, quote, the senator absolutely is not a racist and does not support voter suppression, end quote. Now, Mike Espy's communication director, her opponent, his communication director's name is Danny Blanton. Danny Blanton said that Senator Cindy Hyde Smith talking about voter suppression was, quote unquote, not a laughing matter and called her a, quote unquote, walking stereotype. He went on to say for a state like Mississippi, where voting rights were obtained through sweat and blood, everyone should appreciate that this is not a laughing matter. OK, he said Mississippians deserve a senator who represents our best qualities, not a walking stereotype who embarrasses our state. Now. You've heard me talk about the Voting Rights Act in 1965, which a lot of our people don't understand. Okay, in 2013, the U.S. Supreme Court, in the Supreme Court case of Shelby County versus Holder, the U.S. Supreme Court invalidated a key part of the Voting Rights Act in 1965. That was Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act, effectively allowing officials in southern states such as Mississippi to change election laws without federal approval. Prior to that, they had to get federal approval from a federal judge to be able to change election laws. Right after that Supreme Court decision, you started having all these Southern states with new voter ID laws, new voter suppression laws. We saw it um, in the 2016 election. We saw it in the 2014 election. OK, and this was a backlash from the 2012 presidential election where you had a record percentage of African-Americans voting. Sixty six percent of African-Americans registered to vote voted in the 2012 election uh, and um, elected President Obama to his second term. That sent shockwaves throughout uh, the Republican Party. So after Shelby County versus Holder, you, then you have this backlash, okay, from the turnout 
of African-Americans 2012 to all these new voter suppression laws being enacted. So in 2016, 2016 presidential election was the first one, first presidential election in 50 years that did not have the full weight of the 1965 Voting Rights Act. We saw 14 new states that had new voter ID laws, okay? The nation.com has a whole series of articles uh, dealing with this. And if you've seen uh, my lecture and we have it on DVD, um, at our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, um, African American resistance in the era of Donald Trump, voter suppression, reparations, and high elections have consequences. And I deal with all of this um, in that presentation, okay? There's an article from the nation.com and Ari Berman for the nation and other writers, they had a whole series of articles back in 2016 dealing with the voter suppression that was taking place. November 4th, 2016, okay, four days before the um, 2016 election, they had an article entitled, there are 868 fewer polling places to vote in 2016 because the Supreme Court gutted the Voting Rights Act. There are 868 fewer polling places, fewer, fewer places to vote in 2016 because the Supreme Court gutted the Voting Rights Act. Nearly half of counties that previously approved voting changes with the federal government have cut polling places this election. Okay, see, this is an example of how elections have consequences. This is what people don't understand. This is what people, now the people who tell you don't vote, they're not going to explain any of this to you because they don't understand it. Okay, the people who tell you don't vote, they're not going to explain any of this to you because they don't understand it. All right, let's look at this. You should be able to see it now. How's everybody doing? Share this broadcast on YouTube. How's everybody doing? Okay, we've got uh, G-Man. We've got uh, RLC319. Use government to help state suppress us. Uh, Clarence Miller, can't hear you. You should be able to hear me now, Clarence. Um, okay. There are, this is from the nation.com from November 6, 2008, uh, November 4th, 2018. There are 868 fewer places to vote in 2016 because the Supreme Court gutted the Voting Rights Act. This goes directly to that Supreme Court case of 2013, Shelby County versus Holder. Where is Shelby County? In Alabama. In Alabama, we know was ground zero for the Voting Rights Act. OK, in the fight for the Voting Rights Act, nearly half of counties that previously approved voting changes with the federal government have cut polling places this election. All right. Uh, and just share just a little bit of this article with you. Go read this article. This deals with what I'm talking about. Now, this hasn't changed. This hasn't changed for like the midterm elections because that federal oversight does not exist for these southern states. When a, when a race league called wrong in Georgia is one of those southern states also. Georgia is one of those states where Stacey Abrams is trying to become governor and you have all this rampant voter suppression taking place from Secretary of State, former Secretary of State now, Brian Kemp. Georgia is one of those states. When a race, when a race league called wrong, a naturalized US citizen from Guatemala went to vote in downtown Phoenix just before the polls closed in Arizona's March 22nd presidential primary, there were more than 700 people in a line stretching four city blocks, okay? This is, this is in a primary. This wasn't the November, listen to me. This wasn't the November 8th presidential election of 2016. This was in the primary election, March 22nd, 2016. OK. He said that there were more than 700 people in a line stretching four city blocks. She she waited in line for five hours, becoming the last voter in the state to cast a ballot at 12, 12 a.m. the next morning. She said, quote, I'm here to exercise my right to vote, end quote. She said shortly before midnight, explaining why she, why she stayed in line. Others left without voting 
because they didn't have four or five hours to spare. This wasn't the presidential election, November 8th, 2016. This was in the primary election, okay? This is an example of how elections have consequences. Who nominates Supreme Court justices? The president. Who confirms Supreme Court justices? The US Senate. They're, these people are voted in the office. The lines were so long, and I'll take this off of the share. Okay, I'll continue reading it for you. The lines were so long because Republican election officials in Phoenix, Arizona's Maricopa County, the largest county in the state, reduced the number of polling places by 70% from 2012 to 2016, okay? I put this back on share, just, I don't want anybody to think I'm making this up. Oh, Michael M. Hotep, you lying. No, I'm trying, I've been trying to tell people what's going on. This is one of the articles I use in my presentation. Most of our people still don't know this. I'm like, I, I'm like, where are you getting your information from? This stuff is documented. The lines were so long because Republican election officials in Phoenix's Maricopa County, the largest in the state, reduced the number of polling places by 70% from 2012 to 2016. They reduced it from 200 polling places in 2012 to just 60 polling places in 2016. One polling place per 21,000 registered voters. Previously, Maricopa County would have needed federal approval to reduce the number of polling sites because Arizona was one of 16 states where jurisdictions with a long history of discrimination had to submit their voting changes under Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. This is what I'm trying to explain to people. Anybody who thinks the Voting Rights Act is not important has never read it before. You don't understand history. This plays, this plays directly into what's taking place right now in Georgia, what's taking place in Florida. This plays directly into the midterm, the, the midterm election that just took place November 6. This part of the Voting Rights Act blocked 3,000 discriminatory voting changes from 1965 to 2013. So what they're saying is Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act blocked 3,000 changes that counties wanted to make to voting, where polling places are, how many Sundays you have for, poll, for souls to the polls voting, how many weeks you have or how many days you have of early voting. They blocked, and these were discriminatory voting changes that would have largely discriminated against African-Americans. Now they will also, Republicans will also discriminate many times against white college students who are more likely to vote Democratic as well. But largely the number one target of voter suppression are African-Americans, okay? That changed, that changed when the Supreme Court gutted the law in June 2013, Shelby County versus Holder. This is history. This is history, okay? And to understand what's taking place right now, you have to understand the sequence of historical events that led up to this taking place, okay? And this is, unfortunately, our people don't understand history. And so we don't understand how these laws and things like that are impacting us today because we don't understand how we got here, all right? And the people's history and culture teaches them how to deal with the problems of the past and the present, and how to deal with the problems of the, of the past and the present and the future to meet the needs of the community, okay? So we're gonna post the link of this article right here on the thread of the broadcast. This is from the nation.com. Read that entire article. This is an example of how elections have consequences. Okay. All right. Now let's continue here. Okay. So to go, let's go back to the article from the Washington Post. All right. How's everybody doing? Share this broadcast. We're broadcasting on YouTube. Uh, follow us on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, the African History Network. Follow us on YouTube, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P as well. Okay. And, um, also, if you like this type of information, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Uh, all of my DVD lectures are there, online courses that I teach that are all on demand. 
You can read articles that I write. We have a recommended reading list of books and uh, almost 900 audio podcasts of our shows are there also, okay? All right, so let's continue here. Um, okay, so let's go back to this article from uh, the Washington Post dealing with uh, Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith of Mississippi, one of those states that was covered by the uh, Voting Rights Act of 1965. So in 2013, the Supreme Court invalidated a key part of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, effectively allowing officials in Southern states such as Mississippi to change election laws without federal approval. The video was posted Thursday by Lamar White Jr., the video that I just showed you, uh, a blogger and journalist who also shared the video of, Sen of Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith in which the senator is heard joking that if she were invited to a public hanging, she'd be on the front row, okay? So we talked about that. All right, now, after the public hanging video went viral, Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith suggested in that statement that she was using an exaggerated expression of regard. So I, I deal with this and I, I talk about that in, in, in my videos. Um, the, the two previous ones I put out, she said that uh, she released a short statement and um, that was on uh, uh, Twitter also, okay? And she said that, um, I'll give her exact statement. It was ridiculous. Hold on just a second. Yeah, she said, okay. What did she say? Uh, but she said that it was an exaggerated expression of regard. Any effort to uh, turn it into something else is, uh, um, was, uh, was wrong, something to that effect, okay? She still did not clearly explain um, the comment about a public hanging one. Two, um, I don't even understand what an exaggerated expression of regard is, okay? I don't even understand that, all right? But um, when you read the articles on this, they have her, uh, okay, here it is, here's what she said. She said, in a comment on November 2nd, I referred to accepting an invitation to a speaking engagement, uh, the Senator said in her own statement on Sunday. In referencing the one who invited me, I use an exaggerated expression of regard and any attempt to turn it into a negative connotation is ridiculous, okay? Now, she never, uh, she never, apologize for those statements either, just so people understand, okay? She never apologized for those statements either, all right? Okay, let's continue. Hey, be sure to watch, um, be sure to watch Roland Martin's daily digital show. It broadcasts live Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It repeats, I think, every two hours or every four hours, something like that. I know it repeats at 10 p.m., okay? Um, cause he's talked about this on the show. He had Mike Espy on his show yesterday. You can watch it on YouTube, Roland Martin on YouTube or Facebook, Roland Martin on Facebook. Okay. All right. Cause I text Roland today and, uh, I was asking if he's going to cover, um, a topic dealing with, um, this, uh, another example of how elections have consequences is dealing with. Um, a, a, a person who is nominated for federal judge, Thomas Farr, Thomas Farr, because Roland tweeted today uh, on Twitter, why is Thomas Farr a man with ties to white supremacists and someone who is hostile to civil rights this close to a lifetime appointment on the federal bench? Because uh, Senator Tom Tillis and Senator uh, Burr blocked two black women nominated by President Barack Obama. OK, uh, see, people, I'm telling you, Trump is changing the whole landscape of the federal bench. He's made about 145 nominations to the federal bench. OK, in the past three months, it's gotten a little more coverage, but there's not enough coverage about what Trump is doing to the federal bench. And these are lifetime appointments also. OK, so. Um, 
She was reluctant to apologize or provide more context for her remark when she was questioned by reporters at a news conference on Monday. That's when she said, I put out a statement yesterday and that's all I'm going to say, referring to the public uh, to the public hanging remarks, okay? All right, now she's facing uh, Mike Espy, an African-American Democrat in a runoff to determine who will serve the remaining two years of Senator Thad Cochran's term. Now she was appointed to be U.S. Senator in April of 2018. Senator Thad Cochran of Mississippi, a Republican, um, could not finish the rest of his term because of health reasons. So Governor Phil Bryant, Republican, appointed her to, uh, to that position, okay? And so now she is in a runoff election, which is gonna be November 27th, coming up next week, November 27th, after Thanksgiving, um, to to be a U.S. Senator, okay? So if Mike Espy wins, he would be the first African-American U.S. Senator to represent the state of Mississippi since Reconstruction. Reconstruction ended in 1877, people, just so you understand. He served three terms in the U.S. House of Representatives from 1987 to 1993, okay? Now, many critics of Senator uh, Cindy Highsmith's public lynching comment noted the history of racism and hangings, lynchings in the in the in Mississippi. Mississippi, uh, for, so from 1882 to 1968, as the NAACP reports on their website, uh, there were 4,743 lynchings that we know of from 1882 to 1968. Mississippi had the highest number, 581. They had one eighth of those lynchings. Okay, Mississippi had 581. They had the highest number from during that period of time, okay? And um, NAACP National President Derek Johnson said in a statement, uh, quote, Hyde Smith's decision to joke about hanging when the history of African-Americans is marred by countless incidents of this uh, uh, barbarous act is sick, okay? Any politician, um, a barbarous act. Uh, any politician seeking to serve as a national voice of the people of Mississippi should know better. Okay, all right, now, if we look at an article from news1.com, we'll post this article here from the uh, Washington Post uh, once again for you. How's everybody doing? Okay, name of this article from the Washington Post is, uh, this is from, this is from November 16th. This is from Friday, November 16th. GOP Senator, it's a great idea to make it harder for liberal folks to vote, okay? So on Black Twitter, a lot of African-Americans think when she talked about other schools, she was referring to HBCUs there in Mississippi. So news1.com, African-American publication, right? News One, Kathy Hughes. They have an article entitled, Cindy, uh, Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith wanted to suppress HBCU students, Twitter says. Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith wanted to suppress HBCU students Twitter says, okay? And they talk about um, in, a, you know, in, in the video recorded from the midterm elections, which had surfaced uh, on November 15th, uh, she made comments about quote, liberal folks in those other schools. Th this is what she said, liberal folks in those other schools. Now, who are the other schools she's referring to? Many on social media took as a reference to HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities there in Mississippi. OK, and um, there was one, let's see, there was one tweet. Let me scroll down to it here. Where they talked about some of the HBCU. So Travis Johnson on Twitter, he said um, she's in Stark, Starksville, Starkville talking about how hard she wants to make it for kids at the other schools, meaning HBCUs, Jackson State, Alcorn State, Mississippi Valley State, Tugelo, Tugelo, and Rust colleges, HBCUs. He said, if your vote wasn't important, why do they try so hard to suppress it? Okay, so you have a lot of people there, especially those living in Mississippi, say when she's, when she's talking about those other schools, and this is what she said, other schools, she's talking about HBCUs and trying to make it harder for African-American students at HBCUs to vote, okay? All right, now, um, her spokesperson, 
who, whose name is Melissa Scallon, made uh, a reference to $750,000 that Democrat Mike Espy, uh, who's her opponent, received from an African dictator. And she said uh, she made allegations of corruption against Mike Espy. She said, now the liberal media wants to talk about, doesn't want to, now, now the liberal media wants to talk about anything other than Mike Espy's record of corruption and taking $750,000 and lying about it from an African dictator now charged with war crimes, including murder, rape, and torture. Okay, so I had to research this, right? So let's look at this article with Sun Herald, not Sun Sentinel. I look, I monitor about 35 different news sources on a daily basis, okay? And most of them are not here in Detroit. They're all over the country. So it's the Sun Herald. So let's look at this article from Thursday, November 15th, from the Sun Herald, SB accused of taking more payments than admitted from African leader on trial for atrocities. Because this is what uh, Melissa Scallon was talking about, okay? How's everybody doing? You can post your comments here. Uh, RLC319 said, black faces in high places has not helped us either. Yeah, that's true, uh, but uh, now, Go look at those in Mississippi. Go to Mike Espy's website, his campaign website. Look at his policies and go to the Public Hanging Woman's website and look at her policies. OK, Senator Cindy Highsmith. And then you see whose policies are going to benefit African-Americans best there in Mississippi. Now, the other thing you have to understand is uh, they're going to be U.S. senators. This is not a state senator. This is a U.S. senator. So you do realize that they're going to vote on laws that impact 47 million African-Americans, right? You all do realize this, right? I mean, you, you understand that if there had been one more Democratic U.S. senator in the right type, that Betsy DeVos would not be Secretary of Education right now? Because the vote was a 50-50 tied vote. And in the case of a 50-50 tied vote in the U.S. Senate, who gets the tie-breaking vote? Who can tell me? In, 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 in a 50-50 tie vote in the U.S. Senate, who gets the tie-breaking vote? Who can tell me? Post the answer right here on YouTube. So uh, Democratic U.S. Senate candidate Mike Espy allegedly continued to take payments from an African despot now on trial in international court for crimes against humanity after saying he had halted his lobbying contract with the former Ivory Coast president and received only partial payment, okay? Now, for those watching, those who know me, you know I'm neither Democrat nor Republican. I don't belong to any political party. I, 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 and I've told you numerous times, we need to focus on the policies, not the political party or the personality. And we need to look at the policies of the candidate and see how those policies line up with the issues we are concerned about and see who is going to benefit us, benefit us the most overall. Their policies, but also who will help create the political environment for us to push our issues and our agendas the farthest and get the most accomplished. So go look at Mike Espy's campaign website, look at his issues, look at his policies, look at his platform. Then go look at Cindy Hyde-Smith and see who you're gonna get the most out of. I haven't even looked at his platform. I haven't looked at his policies. I saw the interview Roland Martin did with them uh, on Thursday. I think we're gonna, I think we would get a whole lot more from Mike Espy. And that doesn't mean sit at home. You have to be actively engaged, but also keep in mind that US senators vote on Supreme Court nominations. They vote on federal bench nominations, federal judges. They vote on laws, policies that come from the house that are passed by the House of Representatives and go to the U.S. Senate. And the U.S. Senate also uh, drafts laws themselves, drafts, drafts policies themselves. Sometimes policy you, in general, historically, usually policies originated in the House of Representatives, were passed by the House, then went to the U.S. Senate. OK, the U.S. Senate may change them. Then they have to go back to the House for confirmation. OK, to be voted on again. 
But also the U.S. Senate also votes on the cabinet of the uh, president, his administration. So the, the heads of the department, Department of Justice, the Secretary of uh, EPA, Environmental Protection, Treasury Secretary, Department of Education, all, all of these entities, the Department of HUD, Housing and Urban Development, that's all Senate confirmed. So even though you have a Senator from Mississippi, that doesn't mean they don't have an impact on you and the laws that you are governed by. Yes, they do. And guess what? Your taxpayer dollars pay for it, regardless of whether you like them or not. Our taxpayer dollars pay Cindy Highsmith's salary. It's not just the people there in Mississippi. And then also any, any protection they get from Secret Service, who pays that for that taxpayer dollars? The policies that they write in the law, the policies that they pass, who pays for those policies? Taxpayers. So this is an example of how elections have consequences and have far reaching consequences. So the people who tell you don't vote, they're not gonna tell you any of this. So Lisa said the vice president. So Lisa's the only one that knew that in the 50-50 in the tie in the US Senate, the tiebreaker goes to the vice president. Okay, you gotta watch my other videos. Yes, that's true. Yeah. So if you watched the confirmation hearing of Betsy DeVos, who, and the report came out from NBC News today, that she's wrapped up almost $20 million in security uh, in, in, in um, uh, fees for her security detail, the US Marshals, and that's taxpayer dollars, right? If you watched her confirmation hearing, and I did, she number one, she knew absolutely nothing about education. Um, and she's from Michigan. So her and her husband, Dick DeVos, they, they were behind heavily financing the for-profit uh, charter school initiative here in Michigan, which killed a lot of public schools. But um, the tiebreaker vote was uh, Governor uh, 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 Vice President Mike Pence. They showed that and I watched it live on MSNBC. So let's go back to this article here from the Sun Herald. Fox News reported Thursday that Mike Espy was paid for his $750,000 lobbying contract with former Ivory Coast President Laurent uh, uh, Bogbo's government in 2011. Uh, that year after former US reps, uh, Mike Espy, because he's a former uh, member of the House of Representatives from 1987, 1983, 1993, 1987, 1993. US reps, uh, Mike Espy and, and, and Bob McEwen, a Republican from Ohio came under scrutiny for lobbying for uh, President uh, uh, Bagbo uh, uh, or Gabag uh, Bagbo. Uh, both said they had dropped their contracts lobbying for interests of the African nation. Mike Espy at the time told the Hill.com publication, The Hill in Washington, that he had only worked on the three month contract for one month and been paid $400,000 when he suspended it. But Fox News on Thursday, November 15th, uh, published a U.S. Department of Justice Foreign Agents Registration Act documents that showed Mike Espy was paid the full $750,000 and ended the contract only 15 days before it was set to expire, two days before the March 2011 article in the heel. Now, the Foreign Acts, the Foreign Agents Registration Act document show Mike Espy's Jackson-based agricultural consulting firm, AE Agritrade, AE Agritrade, A-G-R-I-T-R-A-D-E, received a payment of four hundred thousand dollars from the Ivory Coast Coca and Coffee Board in January 2011. Then another $350,000 on March 1st, 2011. The Hill article, H-I-L-L, -L, a political publication, and their website, thehill.com, they have a lot of um, really good articles there. I read thehill.com every day, as, long, as well as the Washington Post and New York Times. The Hill article in which Mike Espy 
said he had been paid only $400,000 and ended the contract was March 12, 2011. Uh, President Gabago lost, uh, President Bagbo lost a re-election in 2010, but refused to step down and the country fell into turmoil and violence. Uh, the president and his former, uh, President of Ivory Coast and his former youth and sports minister, Charles Blake Goud, G-O-U-D-E, have been on trial since 2016 and to, in, in the International Criminal Court accused of carrying out widespread systemic attacks against civilians and crimes against humanity, including murder, rape, and persecution. So this is what Melissa Scallon, spokeswoman for Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith campaign, was talking about. But she, but she made it seem like that the president of the Ivory Coast donated to Mike Espy's senatorial election campaign. She didn't say, well, this was a contract he had a lobbying contract she or something like that she she didn't talk about that okay so this is why i'm sharing this information with you because one i'm neither democrat nor republican two we need to get this information out three i provide you with the sources so you can go research this information yourself proper documentation ends all conversation you don't have to believe a word that i say you can go research this yourself this is why i provide you with the sources so you can go verify this stuff yourself you can go research this yourself OK. All right. Um, so in addition to lobbying for the country's um, um, coca and coffee board, which was controlled by the um, uh, Bogbo government, Fox News said Espy had represented um, the former president of, of Ivory Coast in talks with the Obama administration, the United Nations and the media in 2010. Now, Mike Espy uh, Mike Espy's spokesman, Danny Blanton, told Fox News that Mike Espy worked on agriculture issues with international clients and realized the Ivory Coast, quote, didn't pass the smell test, end quote, so he ended the contract and reported what he knew to the U.S. government. Mike, Mike Espy, also a former U.S. Secretary of Agriculture, faces a November 27th runoff against Republican Cindy Hyde-Smith, which you talked about, okay? Um, the Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith campaign still dealing with the fallout of her recent public hanging comments, blasted Mike, Mike Espy over the report, uh, over this report uh, in a press release titled, quote, have you, have you ever paid $750,000 I'm sorry, have you ever been paid $750,000 by a foreign dictator who is currently on trial for crimes against humanity? Mike Espy has, end quote, okay? So the Senator Hyde-Smith campaign is using this to attack Mike Espy and to distract from her public hanging comments and distract from her uh, voter suppression liberals and uh, liberal folks in other schools uh, comment, okay? So, uh, Melissa Scallon, spokeswoman for Sen Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith, said, quote, it's incredible but true that Mike Espy was paid three quarters of a, of a million dollars as a registered foreign agent to lobby on behalf of a brutal dictator of the Ivory Coast. Now, keep in mind, Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith is, is, is endorsed by Donald Trump. Vladimir Putin stood on stage next to Trump and said he wanted Donald Trump to win the presidential election, okay? And when you look at the transcript of that press conference, the White House version of the transcript, they struck that portion of Vladimir Putin saying that, they struck that from the White House transcript just so people know. You can, all this is easily verifiable. You can go research this. So um, it's incredible, but true that Mike Espy paid three quarters of, he was paid three quarters of a million dollars as a registered foreign agent to lobby on behalf of a brutal dictator of the Ivory Coast. Um, and Melissa Scallon said Espy lied about how much he was paid and he represented someone now charged with crimes against humanity, end quote. Okay. Now keep in mind, Donald Trump is real cozy with Erdogan of Turkey 
and Kim Jong Un, all the despots, all the dick, a lot of these dictators, okay, okay, the uh, one in Saudi Arabia who is alleged ordered the killing of uh, Khashoggi, okay, the the, the Washington Post uh, reporter, okay. Keep in mind, Trump is is real cozy with a lot of the world's dictators. Okay, uh, and, and and also he talked about the arms deal with Saudi Arabia as well, because 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 Trump was reluctant to really come out in in a forceful tone against the killing of Jamal Khashoggi, because he said there was an arms deal on the table with Saudi Arabia. Okay, now Danny Blanton, the, the uh, uh, spokesperson for the uh, Mike Espy campaign. He said, quote, Cindy Hyde Smith had a chance to admit she was wrong, and instead of apologizing, she doubled down. Since that hasn't worked, she's trying to change the subject with a smear campaign against Mike, end quote, okay? So this is what's taking place. You'll hear more about this. The, the election is November 27th, people. The people, the African-Americans we know, and anybody we know for that matter, especially African-Americans, in Mississippi, we need that's Tuesday, November 27th, 2018. We need to tell them, look, you got to get out and vote. Seriously, okay? Go to their websites, look at their platforms, look at their policies, see how their policy, see whose policies best line up with the issues you are concerned about, okay? And I have a sneaky suspicion. Mike Espy is going to be a whole lot better than, than Cindy High Smith. Okay, I'm just saying. All right, let's look at some of your comments here. We'll come to some of your comments in just a minute. How's everybody doing? Hey, be sure to uh, listen to our radio show, the African History Network show. We're on Sundays, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation. Um, I, I, you know, I used to broadcast some on, on YouTube live uh, from the radio studio. For some reason, it doesn't it doesn't work well uh, there because I'm running off of their Wi-Fi. So we usually broadcast on Facebook Live or, or something like that. Um, but we post the broad we post the video here on YouTube like the next day. Okay, so check that out uh, and visit AfricanHistoryNetwork.com for more information. Uh, African American business owners, hey, you can advertise with the African History Network. You can advertise with us. Uh, email us at customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. You can advertise on the audio podcast of our shows and our broadcasts. Okay. And uh, we have a special promotion. First month is 50% off and you get the you get the second month free. Customer service at africanhistorynetwork.com. Let's look at some of your comments here. Let me scroll back a little bit, look at some of your comments. So we have G-Man, we have Top Boss. The nuclear option. Yeah, so the nuclear option was in the U.S. Senate, which took the number of votes you needed in the U.S. Senate for like a confirmation, like a Supreme Court nominee. Uh, it dropped it from 60 down to 51. They employed that for Neil Gorsuch, who was Trump's uh, first Supreme Court nominee, because that was a Supreme Court nomination stolen uh, from President Obama, because President Obama nominated Neil um, 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 Merrick Garland. And they dropped it from 60 to 51 because Neil Gorsuch was so horrible of a pick to print to be a Supreme Court justice. They could not get a consensus of 60. So they had to lower the standard down to the minimum standard of 51 votes. Okay, because he was so horrible of a Supreme Court nominee, and they were able to get the 51 votes. That's how that's how unqualified he was. Okay. Um Let's see. She, she's not joking about what she said. RLC319 said uh, our vote helps with numbers, but not in policies. Uh, oh, it helps in policies also. I'm not sure what you're looking at. Oh, it helps in policies also. We also have to stay engaged as well, but it, it definitely helps in policies. You, when, when, and, you know, we have to, um, um, in many cases, we have to um, support better, better quality candidates, help finance them, 
and, and vote a lot of these people out of office who, who are doing harm to us, whose policies are doing harm to us, those who don't want to hold police accountable, those who are trying to take away our health care, those who are trying to uh, take away funding for schools, funding for public schools, things like this. A lot of those people, we have to vote these people out of office. Our taxpayer dollars are paying for their salaries. Okay, we have to understand political self-defense and vote people out of office who are doing us harm. Okay, um, G-Man said, this is a corporation, not a country. Okay, so even if that, so, so, so okay, that's the case, yeah. So now what? Crown Christ said, we know it is important to vote, but what do we get for our vote if the, is the pressing question? So these celebs need to start talking about that and not just pleading with us to vote. Well, no, what we should do is go to the websites of the candidates and read their platforms and understand how politics impacts every aspect of our life. From the water we drink to the air we breathe to the food we eat, politics is the legal distribution of scarce wealth, power, and resources, and the writing of law, statutes, ordinances, amendments, and treaties, their adoption, interpretation, and enforcement. So we need, we need to actually go and, and look at their policies and see how their policies impact us. And then we and then we have to and then we have to stay engaged. We have to go to the town hall meetings. We have to organize through our various organizations to put uh, uh, to um, put pressure on our elected officials to pass the pass the policies, pass the bills that need the support. Okay, we don't understand how to stay engaged. Okay, so people all across the country have been organizing, and the document they've been using. It's called Indivisible. People need to download this. Now, they just released this past week, I think it was Wednesday night, Tuesday, Wednesday night, they just released a new Indivisible document. But Indivisible, a practical guide for resisting the Trump agenda. This is a free document you can download. Indivisibleguide.com, G-U-I-D-E, indivisibleguide.com. So this was put together by former congressional staffers. And what they did was, they studied how the Tea Party organized against President Obama in 2010 and on. And they took those strategies and put them together in this document for people to organize against and fight against Donald Trump and um, the Republican senators and members of the House of Representatives, et cetera, okay? So people, there have been thousands of organizations that have sprung up across the country. Rachel Maddow talked about this either Tuesday night or Wednesday night on the show, MSNBC. There have been thousands of organizations that have sprung up since, <clears throat> since um, the 2016 election. And they've been organizing based upon Indivisible. I think it's something like 4,000 organizations. Uh, if you go to msnbc.com and um, look at Rachel Maddow's page where they have the videos from her show, they talk about it there, okay? Um, you can watch the video. So earlier in the year, when you had people across the country, every Tuesday, they were outside their member of the House of Representatives office and they were protesting. This was, this was around saving the Affordable Health Care Act. A lot of those people organized based upon this document. It tells you how to interact with members of the, of the US Senate, members of the House of Representatives. First thing they tell you is to focus on your member of the House of Representatives, your member of the US Senate, okay? Because the other ones don't care about you for the most part, okay? And what I mean by that is you can't vote them out of office. So me in Detroit, I can't vote a member of the House of Representatives out of office who is in Mississippi or a US Senator. I can only do that for my U.S. Senator, okay, here in Michigan, or my member of the House of Representatives, who's Brenda Lawrence, 14th Congressional District, okay? Rashida Tlaib, who took over for John Kaya, she's in the 13th Congressional District. I don't vote in the 13th, I vote in the 14th, okay? I may be able to help people organize in the 13th, but I can't vote in the 13th Congressional District. I can't vote in Mississippi. I may be able to help somebody organize in Mississippi, but as far as voting, so they focus on 
their constituents first and foremost. So they have form letters in here. They, sh they show you exactly how to interact, exactly how to put pressure on elected officials, okay? And people across the country have been organizing based upon that and been getting results. The other thing is we don't understand how to assess the previous two years, previous four years, previous six years of a elected official and the policies they put in place, like that. we don't understand how to assess that to see how that has impacted us. Just, we saw the same thing with President Obama. This is why every, every place I do a lecture all across the country, whether it's in Los Angeles, whether it's in Atlanta, whether it's in Detroit, whether it's in Baltimore, things like this, right? Nobody's read this document. Progress of the African American community during the Obama administration. Nobody's read this document. I talk about this on my radio show, in my lectures, my broadcast. This shows how policies from President Obama directly positively impacted African Americans. Nobody's read it. It's at WhiteHouse.gov. If people, if people had read this, this was up during his presidency. This was up during the 2016 election cycle. If people had actually read this, Trump would not be president right now because more of us would have voted because we would have understood, wait a second, these policies, even though President Obama is not on the ballot, these policies are on the ballot. And many of these policies, Trump is systematically reversing. Trump has reversed over 100 policies from the Obama administration. So we don't, we don't understand any of this, okay? So many, many of us are just totally politically, uh, many of us are just totally politically ignorant. We have, we have no clue about this. All right, and I'm not beating up on anybody. I'm just, I'm just stating fact. Okay, let's see. Um, as a lobbyist, you choose who you represent. Okay. But at the same, but at the same time, all those elected officials, they need our vote. They, they need people to vote for them. Doesn't matter how much money they have behind them. The money doesn't vote, the people do. They need people to vote. And you have the, you have the opportunity to, block, to vote them out of office, to block and keep them from getting into office also. This is what we have to understand. If our vote did not matter, why do Republicans work so hard to suppress our vote? Why were there 868 fewer polling places in the 2016 election, as we talked about in the beginning? Okay, why did 14 new states have new voter ID laws? Why was Brian Kemp trying to purge uh, hundreds of thousands of people from the voter rolls in Georgia, okay? If, if our vote didn't matter. Uh, what's the latest on Charles H. Wright uh, Museum takeover? Uh, it's part of gentrification. It's still, you know, the um, coalition, the Black Legacy Coalition, uh, we're working to fight against this. Uh, but it's part of the gentrification taking place. Uh, I'll give the announcement for the next uh, meeting on my show Sunday night because I don't have it in front of me. Harry Reid, a Democrat, was the first to use a nuclear option in the Senate, laying the groundwork for Republicans to also use the option. So the reason why Harry Reid used that, okay, the reason why Harry Reid used that, if I remember correctly, at uh, um, because, yeah, because Republicans were blocking a lot of the uh, bills and nominations from President Obama. So that's why they dropped it. That's why Harry Reid implemented that. They dropped it from 60 down to 51. Okay, Trump is in office because of white people, not because black people did not vote. RLC 319. You can believe that if you want to. When you actually do the research, yeah, white people voted for Trump. But we had the votes to stop him, and we still don't understand that. This is this is one of the examples of what I'm talking about. We can believe that if we want to. Trump won Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania by 78,000 popular votes. That put him over, that gave him the minimum 270 he needed electoral college votes. We still don't understand it. So you can believe that if you want to. That's factually inaccurate. See, that helps us to sleep at night because we still don't realize we had the power to stop this. See, people keep lying to us and tell us, oh, you're only 13% of the population. Your vote doesn't matter. Really? Why do Republicans work so hard to suppress our vote? How many African-Americans were registered to vote? How many African-Americans were registered to vote in the 2016 election? Who can tell me? 
how many registered to vote? See, this is, this is, and if you listen to the interview that I did October 28th, 2018, with one of my teachers, Dr. Claude Anderson. I asked Dr. Claude Anderson. I love Doc. My people quote Doc. I actually know him. That's Dr. Claude Anderson is one of my teachers. I've interviewed him a number of times. I asked Dr. Claude Anderson his answer, this question. He didn't know either. We have to know this, okay? Who can tell me how many African-Americans were registered to vote in the 2016 election? It's two, it's two years later, we still don't understand this. There were 16.4 million African-Americans registered to vote. What percentage voted? 59.6%. That's only about 9.5 million. Do you realize that was a seven percentage point drop from 2012? Do you realize there were about 765,000 more African-Americans registered to vote in 2012 than 2016? Okay, do you, do you understand that just in those three battleground states of Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, just in those three battleground states, if African-Americans voted at the same level in 2016 that we voted in 2012, do you realize Trump would not be president right now? This is what happens when you don't understand the real power that you have. Did see Republicans fear our vote? Republicans fear our vote more than uh, we value our vote. Republicans fear our vote more than we value our vote, okay? You can say that, my brother, but Donald Trump was elected by the office of U.S. president by divine providence. Okay, so you can believe stuff like that, Omar Wally? So why did, why did Republicans take cases to the U.S. Supreme Court? Why did they take voter suppression cases to the U.S. Supreme Court if Trump was, if Trump was nominated by the U.S. president by divine policy? See, this is what happens when we get distracted by conspiracy theories. See, the people who feed you conspiracy theories, they can't tell you this information because they haven't researched it. There were cases, Arizona, Ohio, there were, there were a number of cases that went to the U.S. Supreme Court, voter suppression cases during the 2016 election that went to the U.S. Supreme Court. It's not, cheap, it's not free to take a case to the U.S. Supreme Court. So if he, was, if he was elected by this conspiratorial, whatever the hell it is, why did they do that? Why were there 860 fewer polling places? The people who are feeding you conspiracy theories, they can't tell you any of this information because they haven't researched it. Well, see, what we don't understand is that republics, in 2012, when 66% of African Americans registered to vote, voted, even though there was voter suppression taking place then, we came out in spite of the voter suppression. This scared Republicans to death. So after Shelby County versus Holder, Supreme Court case, June of, June of uh, 2013, the next year, then that's when you see a whole new round of voter suppression tactics. If, if your vote didn't matter, why did they implement all these voter suppression tactics? The people who are feeding you conspiracy theories, they can't explain any of this stuff to you. They, they're not telling you this because they haven't researched it. They don't know it. They're just feeding you conspiracy theories for whatever reason, I don't know. So read this article right here. Black voter turnout fell in 2016 even as a record number of Americans cast ballots, Pew Research Center. This, this, this is from uh, 2017, May of 2017. The information is out. We still don't know it. So if it just in those three battleground states, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, you can probably look at the states that had the high, uh, probably, probably in Detroit. In Detroit, Hillary Clinton got 70,000, sorry, in Wayne County, Hillary Clinton got 70,000 fewer votes than Obama did in 2012. So Detroit is in Wayne County. Donald Trump won Michigan by 10,704 votes. This is what people are not telling us. Trump won Michigan by 10,704 votes. Well, why was the cross-checking system implemented in about 23 or 30 states by Chris Kobach, Secretary of State from Kansas, because the cross-checking system, not 1.1 million people off the voter rolls. The cross-checking system, not 1.1 million people off the voter rolls, okay? 54,000 people were knocked off the voter rolls right here in Michigan, okay? So when people ask certain questions, I can tell what they haven't read. 
So what I did, and you go back and listen to my broadcast, 2016, answering Omar Wiley's question once again, because I can tell you haven't done the research. I told people, go to Hillary Clinton's website, read her 36 policies, because I did. Education, criminal justice reform, making college affordable, on down the line. Then go to Donald Trump's website and read his 13 policies, because I did. You can go back and you can listen to my podcast from 2016. They're all archived. I have almost 900 audio podcasts. Go to AfricanHistoryNetwork.com or wherever you get your podcast, because we're on six different audio podcast platforms. We're on iTunes, CastBox, FM Player, TuneIn, Blog Talk Radio, ACAST. Search for the African History Network show. I went through and I broke all this stuff down. Okay. If you actually looked at the policies, she was largely keeping policies from President Obama in place that people still don't know existed because they don't do any research. Read, read this right here. Trump reversed one, one, he nominates Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III as Attorney General. And people didn't know who Jeff Sessions was before this. Jeff Sessions cheered the gutting of the Voting Rights Act in 2013, okay? Because he's from Alabama, all right? Progress of the African-American community during the Obama administration. So, so the people who, who are feeding you conspiracy theories, right, they're not telling you any of this, okay? You can get this from whitehouse.gov. It's still there. Go research it. Go read it. So... When you actually look at the policies, and I told people, it's not about the political affiliation. It's not about the personality. It's their policies. You read their policies? Even though I wasn't a big Hillary Clinton fan, oh, her policies were much better than Trump's. If you actually read the policies. I don't get caught up in personalities like that. I read the policies. Black Tonight, 16.4 million. 16.4 million. In 2016, there were 4 million people who voted in 2012 for President Obama, who did not vote in 2016. One third were African-Americans. Washington Post has a big article about this. See, what I'm, what I'm explaining, the people who are selling you conspiracy theories, one, they're not telling you any of this. Two, they're not telling you how important our vote was. All you have to do is go look at the effort Republicans implemented in, 26, in 2016 Look at what they implemented in 2014, midterms, okay? Look at the voter suppression laws they put in place. Look at the fight that took place in midterm elections over su voter suppression laws. You look at the cases they took. U.S. Supreme Court just ruled a few months ago on a case out of Ohio. It's not free to take a case to the U.S. Supreme Court, which dealt with voter suppression, and the U.S. Supreme Court ruled that it was constitutional for the state of Ohio to remove somebody from the voter rolls if they have not voted in two consecutive uh, elections. The US Supreme Court just ruled on this. So why are Republicans implementing these things if it doesn't matter, if your vote doesn't matter? No, we don't understand this. So go read this and educate yourself because if we actually understood this, and we understood how these laws are impacting us and what they're doing to us, we will fight back. The reason why many of our people don't fight back is because many of our people don't think what we're fighting for. And we don't understand how these policies are impacting us on a, on a daily basis. It was Trump that reversed President Obama's um, ending of using privatized prisons for federal prisons. He announced that in August 2016, that they were not gonna renew contracts for federal, for privatized prisons for federal prisoners. Trump reversed that. Why? Because Trump was, his campaign was financed partly by Core Civic, which used to be called um, Corrections Corporation of America, and also um, Geo Group, which was, used to be called Wacka Hut. They donate, donated almost $600,000 to Donald Trump's campaign. Okay? And there are articles written on this. You've heard me talk about this before. Um, if you look at, um, we'll pull one up right here because I have thousands of articles. Um, I have thousands of articles bookmarked. But 
when Trump announced it that, uh, when he announced that, let's see, privatized prisons, okay. When Trump announced that they were going to uh, not, re uh, not end the usage of privatized prisons for federal prisons, that caused the, uh, a spike in the stock uh, price, the stock value of Core Civic and Geo Group. AtlantaBlackStar.com had an article from, from December 2nd, 2016, in wake of Trump win, private prisons see their contracts renewed rather than canceled as Department of Justice had recommended. Hmm. This is an example of how elections have consequences. Now, what people aren't telling you is that uh, taxpayers pay for these contracts for privatized prisons. Where does money come from to pay the privatized prisons? For federal prisons, it, it comes from taxpayers. So go, go read these articles, okay? Uh, money.cnn.com, money.cnn.com, February 24th, 2017. Private prison stocks up 100% since Trump's win. Private prison stocks up 100% since Trump's win. Core Civic, formerly known as Corrections Corporation of America and Geo Group, have doubled, have doubled since um, so, so the stocks of the two biggest private prison operators, Core Civic and Geo Group, have doubled since Election Day. Now, Core Civic Stock Exchange symbol, the New York Stock Exchange, is CXW. At the time of this article, stock prices it fluctuates. At the time of this article, their stock price was up 140 percent because their stock price dropped in August of 2016 when the Obama administration announced that they were not gonna renew contracts for federal prisons with privatized prisons, okay? At the time of this article, Geo Group's stock had risen 98%. For all the talk about how good Trump has been for big banks like Goldman Sachs, he's been even better for private prison investors. You, you all realize some of you all watching right now are invested in privatized prisons and don't know it. It's through your pension funds and it's through your 401k plans. Y'all do realize that, right? See, so what you can do is you can get with your benefits manager and find out which companies your pension funds and which companies your 401k plans are invested in and the industries. Because many of us are invested in private prisons and don't know it. Many of us are invested in gun manufacturers and don't know it. Okay. All right. So we have to we have to research this. Uh, and I've talked, you know, you've heard me talk about this before. Let's see. So we'll post a link to this article here from cnnmoney.com. So this is an example of how elections have consequences. And your taxpayer dollars are paying for this. All right. Do, do, do. Yeah, uh, Rod Gillum in Florida. You know, he's losing by about 33,000 votes. You got 5 million registered voters and 5 million registered voters in Florida did not vote in the midterm elections. 5 million registered voters in Florida did not vote in midterm elections. He, he's much better than Ron, uh, Ron, uh, Ron DeSantis, okay? Five million registered voters in Florida, in Florida did not vote. So I'm like, we don't understand this. Here's an example of how we're invested in privatized prisons and don't know this. So we, need, we can divest from privatized prisons. This deals with economic guerrilla warfare and understanding how to weaponize our dollars and how we can stop financing our own dehumanization. So this is an actual example. This is not theory, this is an actual example. NewYorkDailyNews.com had an article and Reverend Al Sharpton talked about this on Politics Nation. You don't have to like Reverend Al. He's, he's showing actual examples of us fighting back. NYC Pension Fund to back out of investments in private prisons. NYC Pension Fund 
to back out of investments in private prisons. And this is what they actually did. So this talks, this talks about how employees of the city of New York divested $48 million in pension fund dollars from three privatized prisons because they found out they were invested in privatized prisons. And they basically said, well, you can have privatized prisons, but you're not going to do it with our dollars. Okay. So they divested from Geo Group, okay, Core Civic, which used to be Corrections Corporation of America. And they divested from uh, divested from G4S, I think was the third one. All right. So this is an example. Yeah, G4S. Uh, so a lot, once again, a lot of people don't know where their pension fund dollars are invested. And you can determine that you want them taken out of this company here and put somewhere else. We don't understand that we can determine that. We don't understand how we're financing our own dehumanization, okay? So this is not theory, because I know a lot of documentaries, they have all type of theories and you know videos and books, they have all type of theory. No, they actually did this, okay? This is not theory, this is history. Okay, so read this article. And we need to implement this in our organizations across the country. And this is something, uh, you know, the, what's it called? The State of Black America that uh, Roland Martin moderated, I think it was last month, a month before last. And he broadcasted this on his platform. They talked about this. Um, Reverend Al Sharpton talked about how for National Action Network, they have an initiative this year to redirect pension fund dollars. And he talked, he talked about how they were, he was speaking to a, um, a union and the union was like 80% African-American. And out of 114 money managers that handled the union's money, uh, only one was African-American. And he was telling them, well, wait a second, you can determine who handles your money. He said, you can get more black people, you can get more black money managers to handle your money. And they hadn't thought about that. And what he was talking about was how the money managers in these companies they work for, they will loan money to developers who then take that money and build high rises and condos in our community and gentrify our community. And they're using our pension fund dollars to gentrify our communities. And he was talking about how we have to understand this exists and, and fight against this and, and redirect our pension fund dollars. He said, we're paying for our own gentrification and don't realize that. Let me try to pull up that link here. Um, I think I have it here. Yeah, that was from um, State of Black America. That just happened in the last couple of months. Let's see, who was that? Thought I, let's see, I think I have a bookmark. We'll come to some more of your comments here in just a second here. I wanna find this, because I know I have it. I just have to look and see. Uh, where I have it. Okay. But we don't understand how we're financing our own dehumanization. Okay, so it's an hour and 58 minutes into uh, the state of Black America, which aired uh, October 27th, 2018. Okay. And uh, Roland showed that on his platform, Roland Martin Unfiltered, and it's on YouTube and Facebook. We'll post a YouTube link here because I have all, all of this bookmarked. And um, if you watch it at an hour and 58 minutes in, um, that's when you have Reverend Al Sharpton talking about it now. 
you don't have to like Reverend Al Sharpton. I'm not caught up in personalities. I'm, I'm looking at tactics that will work. That's what I'm focused on. A lot of people focused on personalities and all this stuff, but they can't tell you any of this information. I'm focused on tactics that will work. And I'm, focused, I'm looking at results. I'm looking at what has worked and I'm looking at tactics that will work. I'm not caught up on personalities. Okay, so here's that link, there we go. So an hour and 58 minutes in, 158.30 actually, that's where uh, Reverend Al starts talking about pension funds. So you can check that out. Um, Obama's record, the number of black food stamps. Well, a lot of that had to do with us going into a recession. I mean, America was, the US economy was losing 700,000 to 800,000 uh, jobs per month, but also 15.1 million jobs were created under President Obama, 2.95 million jobs were created for African-Americans. We saw in 2015, 2016 over 2016, we saw um, the uh, poverty rate drop by about 1.8%. We saw the largest number of people lifted out of poverty 2016 over 2015 uh, since 19, but since about 1968. That's not me. That's the U.S. Census report, the 2016 U.S. Census report, because because a, a census is done every 10 years, but a U.S. Census report comes out uh, in September of each year, which deals with economics, which deals with uh, population shifts, things like that. So a lot of that has to do with the horrible economy that he inherited from uh, George W. Bush. Also, the unemployment rate for African-Americans was cut in half uh, by President Obama as well. I disagree with some of his policies, but I agree with a whole lot more of his policies than Trump, because I study policies. Um, has the federal and state-owned prisons been better for us? What do you mean? State-owned state state-owned prisons are uh, have less violations and are safer than privatized prisons. State prisons in general are better than privatized prisons. Privatized prisons are traded on the on the stock exchange. Privatized prisons don't have an incentive for real rehabilitation because they wanna keep the beds full. So they want recidivism. State prisons are, are not traded on the stock exchange. State prisons, they have more of an incentive for you to leave and not come back, okay? Uh, so privatized, there are, not, there are a number of problems with privatized prisons. That's why they need to be done away with. Uh, well, well, Vince, Vince here, have you read this? Everywhere I go, nobody's read this. Read this because this shows directly how policies from President Obama positively impacted the African American community. People haven't read this. Everywhere I go, I deal with facts and evidence. I don't deal with opinions. I deal with facts and evidence. Read this. this is that whitehouse.gov? All right, so um, let me see. We'll post a link here. But I find it interesting people don't want to deal with the policies from President Obama that Trump is systematically reversing. I just find that interesting. If President Obama didn't do anything, how can Trump keep reversing what Obama did? Okay, there's the link. Go research this, because I can I can listen to what people say. I can tell when they haven't researched this. And, and, and what I find interesting is that other people are not sharing this type of information with you. Other people are not telling you this information. Um, uh-huh, okay. Yeah, okay. See, I, I can tell when people haven't done their research. All right. And Trump is riding on the coattails 
of President Obama's recovery, but Trump doesn't want to give President Obama any uh, credit for it. You've had about 96 straight months of private sector job growth. Trump acts like he created all this himself. There have been about 96 straight months, 96, 97 straight months of private sector job growth. Trump acts like he created this himself. And then keep in mind, Trump was against the auto bailout, which saved uh, 1.4 million jobs also. The auto bailout, I've lived in Detroit all my life. The auto bailout of General Motors and Chrysler saved Detroit. Trump was against that. He said the auto company should file for, file for bankruptcy and move to states like Southern states where they don't have unions and pay the people lower wages and so the people will be forced to take what's offered to them. That's what Trump said. Okay. So, you know, research this. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, what other sensible comments are here? Let's see. RLC said, we only fight back when Republicans in the office. What the hell did the Democrats do for us? Well, what type of research do you do, RLC? That's not true. What type of research do you do? I don't know. Do you listen to my radio shows? My shows are archived. You can go back and listen because I deal with all different types of initiatives, protests that took place, even during President Obama protests when it comes to police shootings, the Black Bank movement. Um, I mean, so what, where are you doing your research? What, 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 what are the news sources you read on a daily basis? Will said uh, Gillum rates of the voters may have been high, but he didn't get the volume he needed to turn out. Yeah, he showed about 33,000 votes. Once, I mean, once again, there were 5 million registered voters in Florida who did not vote. Okay. There, uh, there were 5 million registered, uh, uh, 5 million registered voters in Florida who did not vote. All right. So, hey, listen to, um, we'll be on, we'll do the African History Network show Sunday, uh, 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll talk about uh, what's taking place this week. Uh, remember, all these shows are podcasted at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Um, and then, let's see, at the, uh, this, um, the day after Thanksgiving, November 23rd at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, uh, we'll have the uh, Black Friday Marketplace. So there'll be a lot of African American vendors there at the Black Friday Marketplace. That's a free event that's taking place 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History in Detroit. So I'll be there. We'll have a vendor table for the African History Network. So come on out. So instead of spending all your money at the malls, the after Thanksgiving, you can come spend uh, some money with Af African American owned vendors. You can get your Kwanzaa gifts there, Christmas gifts if you celebrate Christmas, or just in general, come on out. Okay, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Visit theright.org, W R I G H T. Okay, theright.org. And uh, they have information there. Uh, right on the home page and we'll see if they have the see if there's a flyer we'll get that flyer up on our website uh, africanhistorynetwork.com africanhistorynetwork.com okay uh, if you like this type of information uh, you can uh, donate to the African History Network paypal.me forward slash the AHN show paypal.me forward slash the AHN show that helps us to keep doing the research stay on the air keep broadcasting the show it helps me to finance broadcasting the show and doing the research for the show. It takes a lot to put on each uh, Sunday night show, do the research for it. Also, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, okay, so we have our online course bundle pack. They're all on demand. I teach online courses. They're all on demand. And um, 
We have a 10 course online bundle pack. It's on sale $60, regularly $130. It includes ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Ancient Kemet, the Moors and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. That's a 14 hour, seven session online course that I teach. It's all on demand, um, watch at your own pace. And um, you can watch all around the world, I'll post that link there. Watch all around the world. And we have uh, some other courses in the bundle also. Great African Women in History, the Mothers of Civilization. Um, we have one I did dealing with the film Black Panther. Uh, we have African American resistance in the era of Donald Trump, voter suppression, reparations, and how elections have consequences. Um, so, so it's a number of them. We have them all in a bundle pack. It's on sale $60, regularly $130. And it's also at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And we have a new bundle pack, um, the Africans that were here before Columbus, the Africans that were here before Columbus. And that deals with, uh, we know October, and uh, October 12th was Columbus Day. And that deals with the African presence in this country, especially going back at least 51,700 years ago. So it has a double lecture I did with Dr. David M. Hotel, who wrote the book, The First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence. First Americans Were Africans, Documented Evidence. And uh, his book deals with the African presence in this country going back to at least 51,700 years ago. It deals with uh, uh, the Khoisan, who have the oldest DNA on the planet. They come from Southern Africa. Um, they go all around the world. And uh, they were in South America. They were in uh, the US. They were in South, the territory we call South Carolina. So he deals with the, the African presence that was here before Native Americans came into existence. So the Khoisan are the ancestors to the Ainu and the Twa. The Twa are referred to derisively in um, anthropology and archaeology as pygmies. Okay, pygmies. So we also have the Lecture, uh, lecture from uh, Dr. Ivan Van Sertema. Uh, they came before Columbus. Uh, and it has one from uh, Dr. John Herrick Clark dealing with Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust. Um, one of my lectures dealing with Christopher Columbus and Halloween, because we know October 31st was Halloween. So I do with the history of Halloween and some of the history of Columbus and the tie in between the Africans known as the Moors who were in Europe for 800 years and Christopher Columbus. So it was an eight DVD bundle pack, the Africans that were here before Columbus. And then for children, we have the uh, Mel Trek bundle pack, the Mel Trek bundle pack. Um, so this is an animated series, Mel Trek. And it deals with uh, using animation and, and conscious hip hop to teach our history to our children. And it deals with exploring ancient Africa and it deals with exploring pre-Columbian um, Americas and who was here before uh, Europeans came here. And so we have the uh, cartoons, we have the Mel Trek cartoons, uh, episode one and episode two. And then we have the uh, full color um, Mel Trek book, exploring ancient Africa storybook. Okay. And then we have the cartoon also. So it's a full color, 47 page storybook exploring ancient Africa. And there's a glossary in the back also. So this is good for children. This is all at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Then we have a coloring book as well. So you can buy these individually from our website where we have them in a the bundle pack. Uh, and in the bundle pack, it, it includes uh, the Afro Man series also, Afro Man and Protectors of the Book of Knowledge. So that's all at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com because we have to get this information to our children at a young age also, okay? That's at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Um, okay, so proper documentation ends all conversation. People, please do some research. All right, this is why I provide you with sources. You can go research it yourself. You don't have to believe a word that I say, go do your own research. 
Okay, look, we have to get out of here. Hey, remember at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's correct wrong behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. Remember, right now it's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. And Wakanda is a real word, even though um, Wakanda is a fictitious place in the Marvel Comics universe. Wakanda uh, means possesses secret powers in the Omaha Ponca Indian language and the uh, Sioux Indian language as well. I deal with this if you uh, look at my lectures dealing with the film Black Panther. I, I deal with Wakanda. And there's also a uh, Bantu word. And we know Kanda in Key Congo means family, K A N D A. Tonga, uh, uh, Kanda in Key Congo um, means family as well. So Wakanda is much deeper than people think. Um, I have three lectures dealing with the film Black Panther. And uh, we have the bundle pack, the eight, um, what is it, the eight Black Panther, the eight uh, digital download Black Panther bundle pack. Um, so I deal with all that uh, there also, okay? But visit AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We have all that information there, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Okay, right now, let's correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. Wakanda forever. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.